Good day, I am Christine Joy M. Parpan, and in this video, I will discuss the descriptive design for developmental studies. The following are the objectives of this video discussion. First, define what a research design is. Second, explain a descriptive design in quantitative research. Third, discuss developmental research. And lastly, differentiate the types of developmental research. To give you a background on research design, let me define it first. According to Denzen and Lincoln in 2011, research designs are types of inquiry within qualitative, quantitative, and mixed methods approaches that provide specific direction for procedures and research. Others have called them strategies of inquiry. It is important to have a clear understanding of these designs in order to decide on which is the most appropriate to be used in your study. One of the quantitative research designs is the descriptive design. The purpose of descriptive studies is to describe and interpret the current status of individuals, settings, conditions, or events, according to Mertler in 2017. This design aims to describe systematically the facts and characteristics of a given population or area of interest. Let me highlight that in this design, the researcher is simply studying the phenomenon as it is, with no manipulation of the variables involved. Now that descriptive design has been defined, let us now look into developmental research or study. Developmental studies are non-experimental ones. This study is used for changes in behavior that are related to age or of the passage of time. It concentrates on the study of variables, their rates of changes, directions, sequences, and other interrelated factors over a period of time. Here are the types of developmental research. First, cross-sectional research which compares people of different ages at the same time. Longitudinal research, which follows a group of people for a long period of time. And cross-sequential research, which combines aspects of the two techniques. For cross-sectional research, data are collected at one point in time, but from groups that are in differing stages of development or age. Respondents who vary in age, gender, ethnicity, and social class might be asked to complete a survey, say for example about television program preferences or attitudes toward the use of the internet. In cross-sectional research, respondents are measured only once. Longitudinal research. It is a research for populations are studied over time, either continuously or repeatedly. For example, we look into the change in cholesterol levels among women over 50 who walk daily for a period of 10 years. One of the benefits of this type of research is that people can be followed through time and be compared with them when they were younger. A problem with this is that it is very expensive and subjects may drop out over time. Cross-sequential research It involves combining aspects of the previous two techniques, beginning with a cross-sectional sample and measuring them through time. For example, a researcher is following groups of people who were 10, 15, and 20 and lived in or near Tacloban City at the time of Typhoon Yolanda. The study will focus on the impact of the super typhoon on their mental health, careers, and schooling. They will be asked to answer a set of questions every year and will follow up for at least 10 years. This is the perfect model for looking at age, gender, and social class, and even ethnicity. But drawbacks of high costs and attrition are here as well. In summary, developmental studies evaluate changes in relation to time. This includes cross-sectional, longitudinal, and cross-sequential research. This marks the end of the video discussion. Thank you.